Welcome back to Beyond the Helmet. And of course, it's hashtag BTH pod if you're following on social media. I'm your host, Steve McGrath. And again, it is my pleasure to bring you another guest that was not just a high performer on a field, but someone that has translated that success into really a couple of different areas. So I'm pleased to bring you Kyle Arrington, someone I got to watch up as watch growing up as a Patriots fan. Kyle, how's it going today, man? I'm doing well, man. Over here in, uh, you know, in Maryland, starting to uh, get a little spring weather now in, in the 60s a day, man. We're supposed to have a good week, man. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready to kick winter to the curb, man. I, I'm telling you. I, I'm right there with you. Um, you. You know, we talked a little bit before jumping on, and I am always enamored with someone that was that had success in a very specific area of life, and then they sort of close that chapter try to apply those same principles to other things. And it's something that you've done. And um, to date, uh, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're an author, you're uh, clearly a philanthropist. And I want to get more into those different areas that you're working on. But as someone that has no problem applying successful principles to multiple different areas, from the jump, can we set the tone? When you're just thinking about chasing success, uh, you know, you're the highest potential possible, What's like your, your number one or a couple different principles that really stick with you with how to sort of guide how you act and think? Uh, well, for even before the principles, um, I am my uh, I am my worst critic. <laughs> just you know, right right out the gate, I think that's the first thing I would say. Um, you know, I am very just. I think it can be a gift and it can be a curse at times. Um, but but I'm just you know, no, especially you know, we have to in my former profession, no, especially football. Sometimes you have to have a thick skin, right? And so it's nothing that anybody could say to me that I trust me. I already haven't said to myself or even worse. So I, um, um, you know, whether it was be a game or even more so practice, you know, even somebody even called one one ball or anything like that in practice, I would, you know, I, I, I would like just, just, you know, wouldn't let it, you know, wouldn't let it. But, you know, like I said, once again, a gift and a curse, you know, it, it makes me better. It makes me go out there the next day and want to uh, be better, do better, be the best version of myself. Uh, but once again, you know, once again, but you, you can't, you know, properly you know, let it go at that time, you know, you know, so like it's, it's, it's a balance, it's a balance act. Uh, but, you know, just in terms of principles, um, I mean, I'm just very fortunate and um, favored to have uh, grown up in, a, in an environment where, like I said, um, two parents, you know, mom and dad, uh, you know, we didn't have it all, but, you know, they, they, they made us felt like we did. Um, you know, loving uh, that they, we know they grew up on, um, you know, just, just guiding principles of uh, integrity, right? Uh, and integrity of, um, I mean, you, I mean, you, you, it's just so, so many, you know, so many things like, um, you know, as far as, as far as that go. Uh, but you know, it says a lot of the same things I try to instill and, uh, you know, in, in our kids, me and my wife kids now, uh, you know, I'm married, I have three kids. And uh, you know, I think the first thing what's going for my kids is always going to be, you know, number one's going to be integrity. Like, you know, uh, you know, you come across, you're going to come across so many, you know, race, uh, creeds, religions, ideologies, you know, especially as you know, there's nothing probably we call not even America, but the world, right? And so, uh, so for me, I don't, you know, I don't, you know, care, care. Um, but I, that, I, I just care, you know, who you know, who you are as a person. And so uh, I, I think that's a, that's that's the biggest you know principle when uh, when, when that, that 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 comes to mind. But um, I, after that, uh, passion, you know, passion uh, is is a, is a big principle. Um, you know, I doesn't feel like I care about what you're doing. Um, you know, I feel like you know that you know with passion, that's your personal and emotional investment because it's not always going to be as you know. You know. Uh, uh, this is my, my wife's uh, term right here. Life is going to like you. It's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows, but, uh, you know, but, but, you know, passion makes something not so easily to walk away from um, in the face of adversity. Absolutely. Um, so man, there's a couple of things in here right? and I'm going to do my best to circle back to each of them as this conversation goes on. What you kind of said from the jump, though, uh, was something that I really wanted to kind of peel the onion back on, and that's resilience. You know, when you look at your football career, you go, you you have to be a resilient guy to, you know, uh, ha did you know that Hofstra's football program was dying while you were there? Because that would probably weigh on me as a student athlete, let alone uh, going see, undrafted and <laughs> everything that happens. 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I'll just say the right. I didn't realize the writing was on the wall. At least I'll, I'll say I'll say that much. Fair enough. So still undrafted, you get to Philly. I'm sure you're so excited. Signed a big, you know, threat. If I have it right, like a three year deal as an undrafted rookie free agent, got to be feeling pretty good. But of course, um, mm. they release you not a big deal because you go straight to the practice squad, but then you jump to Tampa and then you jump over to New England where, where finally things really stick for you. But Man, there's a two-year gap in there that feels like it's relatively unknown of what the road has ahead. Mm -hmm. Do you mind just speaking about, you know, it's not like you were you were released a couple of times. Did you ever have any doubts along the way that is this going to work out? What's plan B? What should I be preparing for? Uh, no, you. I think you really hit the nail on the head. Now, we're all made up just so uniquely, and and for for me, it was I was always had. Um, I just said I was never a prodigy. I, at least I personally felt like I was never a prodigy at any given arena, you know, growing up as a kid. Uh, but one thing that, I, that I've always had was drive. Um, you know, because I feel talent is great, uh, but you know, talent will only take you so far at the end of the day. And uh, I think at least for me, you know, that one of the best things that happened for me was that I've, um, I've experienced failure early and often. You know, you got a lot of, you know, like I said, it's all outcomes are different, right? But, you know, in, a, in a, you know, some instances, you know, have a lot of talent. I've, I've seen it. You know, have a lot of talented players, way more talented than myself, right? Um, but, you know, you're just, just used to being the best person on the, whether on the field, on the court, winning or whatever, you know, within, you know, within the sport itself. Um, you know, but they get, you know, they get to like that professional level and then they, you know, first, for the first time in their life, they're hit, you know, with adversity. And, you know, it's not always, not always a favorable outcome, you know, uh, for, for them. So I've even before, you know, being released in, you know, uh, uh, Philly and Tampa, my first few years in the league. I mean, I was, I was only a, uh, a one year, I only played one year of varsity football. I went to a D1 AA school and I wasn't a full-time starter to my junior year. You know, like, like you just alluded to, we don't even have a program. Um, I, I've, I've been injured, you know, countless of times, you know, uh, you know, uh, dislocated my shoulder, told my labor on my mean, and this is like, I'm going to talk about high school. So I didn't think football was for me, but I even, even still, I, um, you know, wanted to you know, put all my eggs in that one basket. And, and I, um, I, I felt like it was still like, the best opportunity for my you know, parents not to pay for school. And, uh, like I said, man, I just, um, just felt like, man, you know, with the undeniable work ethic and, and, you know, you kind of just let the uh, uh, the chip, chips fall where they may. You know, you have an und undeniable work ethic and that uh, you're doing, like I said, once again, and you're just doing something you love, you love doing. Um, I mean, you know, you just you keep, keep, uh, keep chipping away at it. Now, again, all that makes sense. But if I think of any spot on a football field, cornerback to me has to be the most stressful because – one one wrong step, like any slip up on any play out of you, know, however many steps there are to take in one play and you're burned and it's over, it can go for a touchdown, big play. I, I mean, man, to mm -hmm. come back from any sort of mistake that you have, and we're talking like any practice at any level, let alone you know the games when everyone's watching. I mean, you have mm -hmm. to be so resilient to play that position for a long time. How much you, did you feel that way on you as an athlete? And how much uh, did like going through that gauntlet sort of prepare you for today? Because one thing to be resilient in the long term, you're looking at building a career, but on a position where there's ups and downs, literally 60 seconds apart. I, I mean, that's a roller coaster every day. Uh, it's, a, it's an emotion. It could be an emotional roller coaster for real. Um, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind, one, one of the coaches, uh, in my career, uh, one of the first things that I've, I've learned, what was said to me that stuck was that, you know, hey, gunfighters get shot. Um, and, and so, you no, know, that, you know, pretty much means like you're, when you're playing a position like that, you just got to, everybody, you know, they're getting paid too. You have to realize that. And, um, you know, they make a play, you have to, you know, you let it go, have a, a short memory. And it's always, it's always easier said than done, you know, but, uh, but you, have, you have to let it go. And, um, and it's like I said, I, I think in terms of a successful, you know, um, longevity, you know, when it comes to success and you know, having a long career at that position, as long as you make, as long as you make more plays than you miss, I think uh, you're, you're, you'll be okay. 
So, you know, to, to go from, and I think one of the pros of having the, the stint in Philly, the stint in Tampa, the stint in New England, regardless of how long any of them are, is you see how different coaches coach, you see how different players approach their craft. So you don't just have, when people maybe think of your career, they think of you as a Patriot, um, and of course, Belichick and all the, the players that you were around. But when you think of everything that culminated with you leading the league in interceptions, what were some of the biggest things that allowed you to break through it and have, you know, football wise, you, your highest level of success on the field? Oh, uh, man, even going back from, you know, from, from the beginning, you know, with that, with Philly, it's um, interesting because we, you know, when you have these, uh, when you first get there, you know, a lot of teams do, you have the, uh, these, the, the stat charts, right? Of, uh, of, you know, who has the most interceptions, who has the most PBUs, who has the most uh, hustle points, you know, things like, like leadership board, right? In each position group. And so off the break, you know, I, you know, after the first week of, uh, you know, of OTAs, you know, you know, training camp, like I was a leader of this boy, you know, and like we got, you know, folks like Brian Dawkins, Sheldon Brown, Asante Samuel, Lito Shepard in this, you know, uh, in this room, you know, and I'm, and I'm at the top of this leaderboard. And so right there, it kind of gave me the, um, the confidence that I, 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 you know, I do belong in this league, you know, coming from a, a you know, D1 double uh, kind of a, a small, um, you know, small fish in, uh, in a big pond scenario. And, you know, for whatever reason, when the, when the bullets became live and, and those exhibition games, it's not like that, you know, I had a bad preseason, but, you know, when you're a guy like me, you have to do something every single day to stay on a coach's radar. Um, if, if, if not even more when it comes to the actual games themselves. So that, I, you know, just didn't do enough when it came to preseason. And, you know, I had a, uh, luckily I had another opportunity in, in Tampa and really, I it's crazy because the same exact you know the heck of a you know um, um, season on on practice squad following all season, but the same exact thing happened in the preseason. And I was fortunate enough to make the uh, the opening day roster, but after that, you know, uh, I was released after the first game. And so, um, so so it was like I said, when well, all we can really ask at the end of the day is, is for an opportunity. And I had two bites at, of the apple. You know, for like I said, kid, come, you know, me, like me coming, coming, uh, my situation. So I couldn't be mad at anyone, but look, you know, just look myself in the mirror. Um, so at that point, I thought it was like, you know, hey, you know, I had two bites that happened, had, I had an opportunity, um, just didn't, didn't work out. Uh, but you know, when New England called, you know, that, uh, the end of that week, and uh, so the, you know, the beginning of the third week, I, I, you know, went up there for a tryout. I uh, was on the practice squad, and then I think I say week eight, week nine, um, someone got injured, so I had an opportunity to, you know, play on special teams. And so I, I took a long, hard look in the mirror uh, at myself the um, the night before the game, and I said, you know what, um, just you know, tr you know, you're here, you know, you're here for a reason. You every, every all the hard work that you know effort, uh, you ate, breathe, live, you know, drink like your craft. You put the work in. So now just don't be afraid because I think um, I, I was afraid to, to fail, you know, uh, and I was, I think I was also afraid to be great. Like, you know, what if I go out there and fail? What if I go out there and be great? You know, you, you just don't know, but don't think about it, man. You know, just let, just go out there and um, let, let, let everything take care of yourself. You know, you be prepared, you know, prepare for this moment. Trust that, you know, you, you put all the work in. Uh, so like I said, um, long story short, I, um, that first game went out there, led the team in special team tackles, and subsequently led the team in special teams tackles the, the rest of the season in only seven games. Um, and I was, and, and I mean, tied to be able to tie a, uh, a special team legend in New England like Larry Izzo, right? You know, I, I think five tackles versus Jacksonville one game, and that was, that was crazy. Like I said, I've always looked at myself, I'm just a kid from Akakik, you know? Um, and then, like, you know, a couple of years later to go out there and lead the league in interceptions, I'm like, like, is this, you know, it's like all of a surreal, surreal moment, you know, from the very beginning. Like I said, I've always looked at myself as I'm just a kid from Mac And it should be stated if you lead the league in interceptions, you should probably make it to the Pro Bowl. But I guess that's just, that's a topic for another time. I, I um, think maybe they were just, they were probably looking at it the same way. Oh, he's just a kid from Mac <laughs> <laughs> Um, So, yeah, you, you know, I'm, Really appreciate you laying that all out. So to kind of hit on some of those central themes from before of, you know, the resilience, the passion, and, and you maybe navigating what it's like to be able to not be afraid, whether it's to fail or be great. By the time your career ends, uh, and I do want to 
touch on how it ends in the decision to, you know, have to hang it up. But when you start to think, okay, what is my passion now? How am I going to apply all these things that I've been doing? These principles have been sort of accruing as a professional athlete. It's very clear that you really want to, to have an impact on the community. Like anything that you're doing, that's like the underlying tone. Mm -hmm. How did you decide, what do I want to do first? How, how does this whole evolution begin to play out? Uh, I think from the very beginning, I've, um, you know, I'm very fortunate to be able to play a child's game for, uh, as you know, as a career for a decade, um, go to two Super Bowls, win one, lead the league, you know, whatever these um, individual and team, you know, accolades, I'm just very, very fortunate to have uh, experienced that. Um, and not that I, you know, take that for granted and I'm not grateful, but I've never, you know, wanted to be defined or felt defined by, uh, you know, by football. And I've always, you know, was just felt defined by, by my principles in which with, um, uh, family, uh, you know, family, faith, community, and, um, you know, just empowering one another, man, you know, just, just, uh, help, help, helping one another. I feel like I was, I was raised in a village. It's a very old school term, you know, people use, it takes a village to raise a child. I know it's cliche, but it doesn't make it less true. Uh, and then we, we really had a powerful village. And, um, you know, we'd be naive to think that all kids, you know, are, have that same, um, you know, grow up in those same kind of environment. So uh, for me, it's just that, uh, you know, we, my wife and I, we created the Evolve Foundation, uh, which stands for, uh, it's an acronym, which stands for Empowering the Value of Life via Enlightenment. And um, I said the word in and, of, in and of itself means, you know, so many things, so many, you know, so many people. And, you know, for us, it means, it means change, you know, it means, it means growth. It means newfound perspective. And, that, and you do that. We do that each and every day. Um, as a parent of, you know, three kids, um, it's not about our kids. It's about all of our kids. And it's about ensuring that, you know, uh, uh, not only that we pass the baton, that we pass the baton to our kids in full stride. And, and so, um, you know, I've always, you know, one also wanted to transcend what I was able to do on the football field into the community. And so uh, I think that's, that's, you know, one of the, at least, at least the, we all get back in our own way. Um, and I, I think, you know, that's, that's our way, at least might know my way of, uh, you know, just paying, paying everything that I did, you know, prior forward. Sure. And, you know, you say that it's your way, but it, it's just an iteration of your way, because like, clearly you're doing it. That's where probably most of your time and energy go, but like, you did also write a children's book. You do also have a American fitness. So like you're, it's the mm -hmm. same passion in a sense, but you, you're picking different ways to sort of attack it. So as it, you know, of, of course the foundation, it, it's, probably the focal point of everything, but like, how did you decide about these little offshoots that were sort of addressing the same issue in maybe different ways? Um, it's a good question. Um, honestly, so one thing that I, I you know, do say from time to time is not about the medium, it's about the message. And so whether that's, uh, you know, the foundation, whether that's the book, whether that's, you know, the uh, fitness brand, whether that um you know, I actually recently you know shot a film over in the last summer so now that's that's coming out in April we have a uh, rare carpet premiere uh, coming up beginning of April for that and it's about um you know an anti bullying it's an anti bullying project uh so like, like I said it's really like what this conversation we're having is not like I said it's about them like what 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 are you trying to get across and so for me anything that I put my name on on my stamp on is is, is always been something that I feel I want to be passionate about or because because if I'm if I'm if I'm gonna give you I'm gonna be all in. If I'm you know I, I can't just be kind of um I'm, I'm kind of here and there I float in and out. No I'm I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna give you all my time. I'm gonna be all in because if my name is on it, it's gotta you know it's not about just doing it, it's about doing it the right way. And and so I I think that's uh that's that's what it kind of kind of what it comes down to uh for me. Uh, there's a famous quote, but uh, the first time I heard it, it was. Dan Orlovsky attributing Peyton Manning to saying it, um, but it, it, how you do anything is how you do everything, right? It's just sort of like, mm -hmm. to your point, if your name's on it and, you know, when your name's on it, you know what that means. You know where the bar is set on that. It, you have to, it has to just hit that level. So I certainly appreciate that that's the, the way that you go about it. And I think, again, what you're doing is amazing, trying to give back to the, the community, help the next generation. You're doing a lot, but it, you know, five years, ten years from now, do you have like a specific vision of, of where you want it to be, or or is it more just the the step ahead, just take the next step and, and figure it out? 
Uh, to uh, to be completely honest, I've all, always just been made up like this. Um, I've never really thought too far into the future. Um, you know, I just just kind of live, you know, live every day like it, it could be your last. I mean, an, an, an approach. I, I think an approach is another uh, um, word of emphasis, or even even a principle, if you will, that uh, you know we can't put enough of an emphasis on. And to to your point, like you just said, that, um, from Hey man, it's quote like if the way you approach one thing is going to be the way you approach you know the, the the next thing you know to to a certain degree, and so the way I've always uh, um, approached life is just like it's I just you know do I live it and whatever I'm doing I want to do it like you know it's 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 it's, it's the last um, last time last chance that I'll, I'll be able to do it you know and I, and, I, and if you prepare and if you prepare like that. Um, you know, I, I think you'll, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be okay. And um, especially because if you're trying to do positive things, positive results got to follow, you know, none, nonetheless. So um, that, uh, that is like, so that's kind of always been my, my, my thought process to, uh, you know, to it. Um, even, even when it came to football itself, I would, you know, people ask me, well, you know, you, you know, you're, you, what do you want to do out of college? Do you want to continue playing football? Go to the league? Well, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, um, I'm worried about these midterms right now. You know, I'm not even, <laughs> You know, and I'm, you know, we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, you know, kind of thing. It's not to say you're not prepared, but, you know, you just, you know, I, I didn't have, I never put so much stock into, um, into the future. I'm just, I'm just enjoying, um, you know, enjoying the moment right now. Very cool. Good. Understood. Um, you know, one thing that I, I, I do have to ask, just, we touched on it very quickly and, and it's you, we kind of jumped into what you did after the game, but like, you know, you, you leave New England, you sign with Baltimore. That has to be a huge, you know, rush for you to, to say, I get to go back home, play in front of my mm -hmm. people um, one year under your belt. And then ultimately it, it appears like it's just a, a road. I don't know if it's a single concussion or if it's mm -hmm. multiple, but basically I'm sure that even for someone that didn't put too much stock in that, where this is going to go, that, that had mm -hmm. couldn't have been the way that you wanted it to end. Do you, do you mind just opening up about the closing that, that football chapter um, of your book? Absolutely. I mean, it's not was it was not the homecoming that I was uh, expecting. So, I mean, to, uh, truth be told, I grew up a um, diehard. Well, that time, at that time, you know, named uh, they were named the Red, you know, Redskins fan, uh, newly named Commanders. Uh, still trying to wrap my head around. I'm still trying to get used to saying that. Uh, but uh, but even still, to have the opportunity to do play in front of the uh, the home, you know, your home state um, home, home team. And like hey, like I said, if you're from Maryland, you you can jump and jump on it, you know, the bandwagon whenever you you so. You so pleased. <laughs> so, uh, so I did. know I was, I was, you know, grew up a Raven fan as well when I, when they were winning. Um, but no, but like I said, he was to have the opportunity to be able to play in front of the, you know, um, you know, in front of the family and friends. Uh, something I like I said once again also forever be grateful for. Uh, we you know didn't kind of, um, you know, uh, materialize the way I, I, I thought it would have. But like I said, that's 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 life. Um, and so with the once the risk outweighs the reward. When it like as you from you know just mentioned um, as far as the concussions go, it's something that you 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 just have to think about as a not a, not as only as a player but even more so as a person, because you know so much more life to live after you know after this game is um all said and like you know you're all said and done with the you know with the sport, um, and so you know it it, it was um not to get too you know, into it, but, uh, you know, to get a little candid, um, it was, you know, it was this, you know, the one, I've had a concussion before, but that, that one was just like the one. And it was a, um, it was a journey. I uh, still is a journey, you know, each and every day. And um, in, in, in terms of, you know, um, to always just, you know, still to make sure that I am, you know, the best version of myself. And, and, and with that, um, I don't know, it, it's just one, it's just par for the course for me, I guess. And like I said, I've always had the, uh, I've always felt like I've had the, uh, the the path less traveled. Anyway, you know, nothing's ever been easy for me. And so uh, why, you know, why the beginning of my career wasn't easy? Why would the end be? You know, why would the transition be? But I, uh, one, one, you know, one, um, one, one quote that I, I like as well uh, is a proverb which says, um, you know, we don't, we don't die by, well, we don't drown by falling into the river. We drown by staying submerged in it. And so I could, you know, use it. I, I, you know, I, I could wallow in my own sorrow, uh, or I could, you know, use it as a uh, baptism, you know, by fire, if you will. And so, I mean, that's 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 what I did. I'm um, you know, put the work in like I like I normally would, but only, you know, this time, you know, wasn't it wasn't physical. It was spiritual. 
you know, um, and then and, and everything else I had to do in order to, like I said, to kind of get back to my baseline and get back, you know, get back to being like I said that the best, you know, best version of myself that I could be, you know, not only for myself, but more for my family, for my friends, for my community. And, um, you know, hence why the word, like I said, evolve means so much uh, for, uh, for not only, you know, for, for the foundation, for the community, but just, you know, for, for myself. Absolutely. I uh, appreciate you opening up about it. Uh, I, I'm seemingly there's no, there was never any real second thought about it. And clearly it's worked out with, you know, you being able to truly make a difference. It's, it, it's great to be playing a sport and all that, but you know, what you're doing now, I think has a chance to like really impact so many more people. So it's a, you know, the, it's an incredible evolution to watch. Um, I, I'm happy that I, I've had a chance to talk to you and, and help sort of spread the message for anyone that's unaware. Um, so Kyle, as we get to the end here, I just got a couple quick questions for you. Uh, it's called Absolutely. the gauntlet. I need, a, need a, your knee jerk reaction to a few things, starting mm -hmm. with what's most important. Is it having the number one offense or the number one defense? Number one offense. You All say right. you thought I was going to say defense with that one. You know, I think offense, man, I, I've seen it time and time again, man. I mean, you can have the, you can be the best defensive player, the best defensive play position, but sometimes, man, better offense beats, great offense beats great defense, I, um, you know, a lot. <laughs> Definitely. Now, you know, just – just in New England, I, and I mean, the, it's a long list. So just quickly with New England, between Moss, Welker, you know, Brandon Tate, uh, Edelman, Dion Branch, just practice alone had to have been difficult with guys like that you're going up against. When it came, whether it's them or anyone else, um, what would you? What did you look for? You know, the offense breaks the huddle, they get to the line of scrimmage. What were sort of your, your quick keys in your head to sort of get a, a, a gauge for what's about to happen and just even the receiver in front of you? What were you looking for tendencies? Mm, man, uh, football, you know, so situational, man. Uh, so it comes, it always comes down to, uh, you know, down and difference, whether it's P and 10, whether it's uh, they got a first down, um, you know, it's just, just wired that way in New England, man. It really makes you a student of the game. So uh, you would look, it, it, you know, you got to kind of know what the, what the defensive play is uh, itself. And then you kind of, uh, you know, you, cause you always want to uh, work within the, whatever the defensive play structure is. Cause, cause you know, you have your responsibility as well. So, um, but as far as, you know tendencies uh i mean you know you always look at um little little, little things man you know some guys like um at, for example like and even even um you know playing the games like antonio brown uh if he's at the line of scrimmage and he's not fiddling with his glove you know it's either a run play or his uh he's not you know the ball's not coming his way you know like like like, like little things like that um that, that you try to get a you know get a get a key on now did you have a, a particular receiver or a particular team that uh you really enjoyed the matchup, uh, not just because it was a rivalry, but just like the actual person that, or different receivers um, you'd have to guard. I, I love, I love, uh, I love going against Edelman every day in practice. I love going against West, you know, um, before then, even as well uh, in practice. And he, even when he went to Denver, um, I love going against Ty. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I think the slot man, the slot is real. real what I really you know those those guys where you know. Um, you know, because because the whole field is not only is the whole field open up to them, but the whole is also open up to you. Because when you're on corner, you know you want one one side or the other. But you know when you're in a slot, you're in the middle of the field. You you know you're right in the mix. Uh, it's a rare breed to be a good slot corner. I don't know how you did it. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, now, what's most important, players or scheme? Players. All right. I mean, it's a mix of both. Don't get me wrong, but I would, no, of I would, course, I would of course. give the edge. I would give the edge to the players. Favorite football memory? Does anything in particular stand out? Uh, the missed kick. <laughs> uh, the miss, the missed field goal. Uh, ball was is um is that Billy Billy Cundiff, uh, Baltimore? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. Yeah, the miss, uh, the miss field goal. Uh, that sent us to the uh, Super Bowl. Um, it was before yeah. Tucker. I think it was before Tucker. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, the, yeah, the missed kick. Uh, I mean, that was like I said, well, that was my, you know, I think I might have been Tom's fourth, fifth, sixth, who, who knows at that point, but uh, I know that was my first um, um, experience. Well, 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 first, just you know, just just surreal feeling that man, you know, you're going, you know, you're going to the Super Bowl, you know, it's it's, it's, it's something that uh, from the, from the moment that you know you put those cleats on as a kid that you you, you dream about, and uh, so so yeah, just to just just to to that. that but that feeling that they hit you in that moment was, like I said, just, just surreal and really hard to put into words. 
So last one, and it's to put a pin in everything we've talked about, so much success-related talk. What's the one piece of advice? We can leave this conversation on if you were going to talk to a 16, 17, 18-year-old kid about just regardless mm -hmm. if it's football or not, just chasing the dream, getting the optimal level of success possible. Uh, one piece of advice. One piece. Two if you have to. Two of two of two of a must. Uh, it's worth it, you know. Um, trust the process, embrace the journey, and just know that that it's worth it. You know, uh, you know. Times we 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 think to ourselves, well, is it? You know, is this for me? You know, we've all we've all had those moments. You know, where where I am, what am I doing? Um, is this really for me? And you know, it, life is, um, it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, the greatest teacher of all time, you know, more than, more than any, anybody or any person could ever be. And so you'll, you'll get your lesson out of it one way or the other. So I would, uh, I think that, that, that would be best piece of advice or one, um, I guess any take, when you take away anything, like I said, just, uh, just trust the process. There you have it. Kyle, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, it's R, which is ARR24.com, your website. Um, of course, it's the Evolve Foundation. Where else should people be checking you out, following you, uh, and what the foundation's doing? Uh, yes, so if you can check us out online at www.theevolvefoundation.org. Uh, you can check me out on social media, Instagram at, at uh, ARR, the number two, uh, four spelled out. Um, pick up, you know, pick up your copy of uh, Piece It Together. You know, it's my uh, children's book. You can find it. Um, you can find it on my website at air uh, air twenty four com, but also on uh, on Amazon and uh, Kindle as well. Uh, so uh, so yeah, um, stay uh, stay on, be on the lookout for the movie Hope Lives uh, coming um, coming out soon. I had the rare copy premiere April third. I uh, will have more information to follow in terms of um, platinum you know, streaming platforms. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I said, um, you know, just uh, just continue to embrace the journey. Well, you have to let me know when the streaming information is out there. I will do everything I can to help spread the word. I had no idea that, that was going on. It's such a cool thing, which is why I can't wait to see what the future holds. Thanks again for taking the time. Absolutely. No, uh, thank you for having me. So I'll be back soon. <laughs>